DataView is a powerful Obsidian community plugin that can transform your vault into a searchable database. With DataView, you can easily filter and collect notes based on any criteria. I personally use it to track tasks and projects across my entire vault. DataView is incredibly flexible, and this can make it a little overwhelming for beginners. So in this video, we'll focus on some simple queries for setting up visually informative dashboards that will enable you to take quick action on important tasks and notes. I've made some updates to the Task Manager Vault that I built in a previous video. We're going to be working inside of the Projects folder. This Projects folder used to have three subfolders for active, uh, future, and completed projects. I've gone ahead and deleted those folders. We're not going to need them anymore because we're going to create a dashboard that will make it a lot easier for us to see what projects we have and what their status is. So I've created a several uh, sample projects and given them some metadata that we can work with. The tags uh, tell us that it's a project. We're going to be able to search either by the project folder or the project tag. I've got a deadline, an area that these belong to, and then a status. Now, before we can do anything with this, we have to install the DataView plugin. So we're going to go over to Settings, we're going to go to Community Plugins, and then we're going to make sure that the DataView plugin is installed. So actually, I'm going to delete it really fast, just so you can see the process. We're going to Browse. DataView is a very popular uh, plugin, so it's going to appear right up at the top. So you click on it, hit Install, and then enable it. Now there are tons of settings that you can do for data view. Uh, for the purposes of this video, we're actually not gonna worry about changing any of the settings. What we want to do is things that are right out of the box, easy, easy to do. So now that we've got the data view plugin installed, we can actually start building our dashboard. Now I'm going to go up to my utilities folders where I have all sorts of files that are kind of helper files. So we're gonna create a new canvas for our dashboard. And then we're gonna go down to the bottom here and drag to add a card, and we're gonna drag it up. And we're going to make a list of all the projects that we have in our vault. So I'm gonna label this with a header. We're gonna say all projects. And then we're going to do three back ticks. The back tick is the key right next to the one on the left of it. And then we write the word data view so it knows that this is a data view query. And then we're just going to say list. And we're gonna do it all caps so that we uh, recognize this as a list. And then I'm going to give it a source that I want the list uh, to be made from. So in this case, the projects folder. So I'm gonna say from, and then I'm gonna put in quotes and then the name of the folder. Then I'm going to go down to these three back ticks at the bottom and hit enter. And now you can see we have a nice list of all of our projects. And we can click on these and open them up and we can see those different projects. And we can just hover over them and see the contents as well. That is as simple as it can get when it comes to data view. And there's a lot that you can do with just lists of different notes. Now, if we want to get back into editing this query, we just hover over this list and we get this little code icon that shows up in the top right. And we can click on this and we'll get back into the source code for this query. Now, I want to be able to group these different projects by their status. As you can see in here, each of these projects has a status and I want this list to have them grouped by that status. Let's go back over here. Now, in order for this grouping to make sense, so let me show you really fast. When you say group by, this is how you make a grouping, and I say status, that just gives me each of the statuses that are available across these different projects. I don't just want the status, I wanna be able to see what the files are, get the links to them. So in order to be able to do that, we have to tell the list that we want the link to the file. So for this, we're going to say rows.file.link, and that will give us our statuses and it will show us each of the files underneath those statuses, or that the have those statuses. Now. This might get a little bit big. Um, if we have every done project in here, this list is gonna get really, really long. So we wanna split these up between different cards inside of our dashboard here. So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. I'm gonna grab another card. And what I'm gonna do 
is I'm going to create a card for each of these statuses. So for this, I'm going to say holding tank. So holding tank is our future projects. We haven't started working on them yet. Enter a couple times and we're gonna write a data view query. We're gonna say list and then we're going to say from and we're gonna go for our projects folder. And then we want just the ones that have the status of holding tank. So we're gonna say where status equals holding tank. So now we have our two projects that have the status of holding tank in this card. So let's go ahead and create the other ones. So now we've got those cards for each of the statuses and it's a little easier kind of now to see the, the position of where these projects are. So we've got ones that are not yet started. We've got ones that are actively being worked on and then we've got projects that are done. And this list can grow and grow and grow. It's not gonna make it hard to find my holding tank projects, the things that I want to do later. So it's nice that we've got these lists separated out, but I want to see a little bit more information about each of the projects at a glance here. So right now we've been working with lists. There's another query type that we can do and that is table. We're gonna zoom in on the holding tank card and then we're gonna click on this query and we're gonna change this from list to table. And with table, we can set different columns of data that we want to be able to see. So let's go ahead and say status. And then I'm going to capitalize the, the column name here by saying as status. So you can change what the column name is just by saying as and then putting in quotes what you want it to be called. So let's go back out here. So now as you can see, we've got the files listed here and then we've got their status. Now we already know that the status is holding tank, so we don't actually really wanna put status here. The other uh, metadata that we have available to us in these projects, we have a deadline, we have an area in which they belong. Uh, we also have a tag, but the tag is just project. That's actually something else that we can do. So from here, we're, we've been querying for the project from the folder that they live in. We can actually also say from project, from the tag. So this could live anywhere inside of our vault. I could put it at the top level, I could put it inside utilities, whatever and it would find it no matter where it was. I actually like working with tags better because of this reason. I can have files in any, any location I want inside of my vault, and as long as they have the right tag, I can find them with my data view queries. Now, one caveat with using tags with data view is that I, as you can see, I am now getting this project file showing up. This is the template that I used to create new projects. And it, of course, has a tag of project in it. I don't want that showing up in every list. So what I'm going to do is go back into my query and I can say minus and then a folder name and that will make it so it says get all the files that have the tag of project that don't live inside of the templates and we are going to need to put an and in here otherwise that won't work so now we're just getting the projects that are actual projects not the template so now let's also go back in here and we're going to actually say deadline we're going to say as deadline now we can see we have some deadlines here. Now what's neat about this too now is that we have these different columns of information. I can now sort them according to that that column. So I can now say sort deadline. So now that doesn't change anything because it was already uh, sorting by the date. Now if we wanted to change the order we could say descending and now November 9th is the one that's on top. October 31st is the bottom. So now this is newest to oldest rather than oldest to newest. So let's go ahead and add our area in here as well. So we're gonna put a comma and we're gonna say area as area. And now we can see what area it belongs to as well. I actually wanna switch those around and which order you put these columns in matters. So if I want area to show up first, I just put it first. And now area is here, deadline is last. And what's nice is that I can click into an area and go into it from this table, from this dashboard if I wanted to. Another really good thing that you can do with a dashboard like this 
is you can create a calendar, like a little mini calendar. So let's go over to our active here. I'm going to switch this to be a calendar. And with a calendar, we have to provide it a date that we want for this to, to pull from. So we're gonna say deadline, and we're gonna do where the status is active. And then this puts in a little calendar for us. And you can see there's a little dot next to the 15th. That is the deadline for one of our projects. I can actually click on this and go to that project. Let's add a task of complete user test. And then I can go back over to my dashboard here, and when I hover over this, we'll be able to differentiate it. So we can hover over this and see the project that has a deadline on the 15th. We can see the contents of that project just by hovering over this. And we can do that for the one here as well. So this is kind of nice. It kind of gives you a quick glance of when projects are due. And unfortunately, it doesn't give you the title of the project, so you kind of have to just know what the project is based on the contents, but you can click on it and go to that project and see more information about it. Believe it or not, that's the majority of what you need in order to get started with data view. Let's go back into this query real fast. If we look at this. So you can do a table, you can do a list, and you can group that list based on different metadata that you have in your notes that you're querying. You can have this little mini calendar. You can specify where you want the data to come from. If you didn't have a from, it would just pull all the notes that you have in your vault. So you can do it by tag and you can do it by folder. Using this where statement, you can filter out the notes even further. You can sort them by the different metadata as well. Now, I have used DataView for a long time and I still forget sometimes the syntax for these queries. It's a lot to remember. So something that I've done to make things easier on myself, I've actually created some templates that I can use to insert these queries wherever I want them. So I've got a query for my lists and I've got a query for table. If I want to be able to insert these somewhere, let's just go over to this sample project and I can go here and I can go to insert a template and I can say I want a data view table query and that puts that right in there for me and I change the column name to be status and we're going to say status and then I'll go ahead and just do by a folder name and this is going to be projects and then I've got my query ready to go. If you wanna be able to access these templates, they're available on my website. You can find the link in the description below. I'll also be including a template for calendar as well. I'd love to know if there are any specific use cases that you have for data view that you're not quite sure how to build. Leave them in the comments below and I'll make sure to include them in a future video. In the meantime, if you'd like to build your own task manager vault, you can watch this video right here.